We're talking about filter, map, reduce. I'll show you how to chain them together. Then we're gonna talk about compact map and flat map. A good way to think about these higher order functions is they are shorthand syntax for a basic for loop. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Filter, map, and reduce iterate over an array and spit out their results into a new variable. So I'm going to need an array, so I'm gonna copy and paste that here. As you can see, I have an app portfolio of my object here of an indie app, which has a name, monthly price, and users. And as you can see, I've created four indie apps with uh, different names, monthly prices, and number of users, and thrown them into an array called app portfolio. This is the array that we're going to use with the examples on filter, map, and reduce. Let's dive into filter first. So let's say I wanna filter through my portfolio of indie apps and pull out the free apps. So right now, Fit Hero with a monthly price of zero is the only free one. So let's say let free apps equals, say app portfolio, so this is the array that I'm gonna iterate over, dot filter, and you can see it takes in a closure, and a simple way to write this is with a trailing closure. I'll explain that in a second. So we'll do dollar sign zero dot monthly price equals equals 0, 0.00. A brief explanation of this trailing closure is the dollar sign zero is every item in the array. For example, the first iteration over the app portfolio array is the indie app creator view. Dollar sign zero, the second iteration equals fit hero. Dollar sign zero over the third iteration equals buckets and so forth. So it's gonna check every element's monthly price and if it is equal to zero, it's going to spit it out into this free apps array. So when I come down here in print free apps, in the console down here, you should see just Fit Hero printout. Indie app, Fit Hero, monthly price of zero. Now, if you wanna dive more into the trailing closures, I have a whole video all about closures, explaining all of this. You can check it out. I'll link it into the description. But the way filter works is you just need to pass in a conditional. So this has to equate to true or false. As you can see, it equals equals zero or not. So let's try another one. Uh, users, let's say if users is greater than 5,000. And instead of free apps, we'll call this high users, right? I want to filter all my apps by which ones have high users. So now when I run it, you should see the array here. Buckets has 7,598 users. Connect4 has 34,000 users. So again, it filtered out all the apps with high users based on this conditional that I passed into the filter. And as I said in the intro, these are basically shorthand syntax for for loops. You could do the same thing by doing this very basic for loop here, right? You have an array called high users. You go for app, in app portfolio, so it's gonna iterate over all these apps. It's gonna say if app.users is greater than 5,000, go ahead and append that app to the high users array up here, and then we'll print out high users. If I print this again, we should see the same thing, buckets and connect four, same thing we just got. So essentially what filter is, is a way to take these, you know, whatever, five lines of code, we'll delete that, and to put it into a nice one-liner. All right, now let's talk about map. So a very common use of map is to pull out all of a specific property. So let's say I wanted to pull out just the names of the indie apps, put them in a list and sort them alphabetically. So we'll say let app names equals app portfolio dot map. And then again, you pass in the closure, dollar sign zero dot name. And then now if I print app names, I'm gonna comment out the filter print so we don't jumble up the console here and, and get confused here. So print app names, you see creator view, fit hero, buckets, connect four, so again, map went in, just pulled out all the names. I could have pulled out all the prices. I could have pulled out all the users and put that into its own array. And then now that you have that into its array, you can also do dot sorted, right? And then now that will put it in alphabetical order. So you can see, pulled out all the names of the array and sorted them in alphabetical order. Let me actually run it. See buckets, connect for creator view, all in one simple line of code. So again, shorthand syntax for basic for loops. Now that's the example of pulling out a specific property, but let's say I wanted to add a transform to that property. Let's say I wanted to do increased prices. So I can do app portfolio, map over that array. Instead of dollar sign zero dot name, I'm gonna do dollar sign zero monthly price, but I wanna multiply it by 1.5. Let's say I wanna pull out all my prices and then also multiply them by 1.5. So another aspect of map is it'll iterate over that and apply a transform or an operation to each element. So now instead of print app names, I'm gonna print increase prices. We'll run it and you're gonna see an array of all my prices that have been multiplied by 1.5 if I were to increase them. Okay, on to reduce and then we're gonna start with a super basic example and then I'll show you a little more what we can do. So super basic, let's say let numbers equal, I don't know, three, five, nine, 12, 18. So what reduce does, it will reduce all these values into one. And the most common way that you use reduce is to you know, sum up an array. So say I wanted to get the total sum of all these numbers. So say let sum 
equal numbers dot reduce and then reduce has a very tricky autocomplete but again you can pass in simple closure here so we do a starting value so i have an int so i want my starting value to be zero we're going to come back to this in a second and an operator so i'll do plus so the plus means i want to sum them all up so now if i print sum and then let's comment out increase prices so we don't clutter up the console now when I run that, you will see the sum of numbers is 47. 18, 12, 3, 9, and 5 is 47. Now, again, remember the initial value was zero. Let's say I wanted the initial value to be 100. So now it's gonna add, basically gonna add 47 to 100. So I get 147. So you can start with an initial value and then whatever you wanna do. Now let's say I wanted to subtract the total of this array from 100. Now instead of the plus, I do a minus. Now it's gonna be 100 minus 47, which as you can see is 53 down there. So the simplest version of reduce, we're gonna do a little more complex version in a second, but the simplest version of reduce, again, you start with an initial value and then you add an operator in here. Okay, now let's do a little more complex uh, example. Let's say in my app portfolio, I want to get just the total number of users, right? I wanna add up all the users from each of my indie apps. So here we can do let total users equal app portfolio, again, that's this array up here that we're, we've been working with, dot reduce. And again, the initial value, we wanna start with zero. And then now we wanna pass in another closure to add these two together. So we can do dollar sign zero plus dollar sign one. I'll explain this in a second, dot users. And then here we will print total users. So this operation we're passing in here, again, remember I told you dollar sign zero is the placeholder for each iteration through the array. Dollar sign one is the next iteration. So you're adding those two together. So when you're adding them up, you're adding here in creator view, you're adding four, three, five, six to one, seven, five, six. Then you're adding that to seven, five, nine, eight. So that you're, you're going through and adding those together. That's what the dollar sign zero and dollar sign one mean. So when we print total users, we're going to get that number. Uh, again, let me comment out some and it's 47,791. That is the total users of all my app. And again, we went through and reduced just the user's property of the app portfolio down to one variable called total users. Now let me show you how you can chain, filter, map, and reduce together to do some complex calculations all on one line. Now a little caveat here, this can get a little uh, messy if you take this too far. So always consider code readability versus trying to get everything on one line. That's my caveat, but I just wanna show you an example of what's possible, and I'll let you use your judgment on what's readable code and what's not. So let's try to figure out our recurring monthly revenue. So each of these apps has a monthly price, right? $11.99, $3.99, and they have a number of users. So monthly recurring revenue for each app is you know, monthly price times number of users. But we wanna get the total for a whole portfolio, not just each app. So we gotta do some combinations here. So for chaining, we can say let recurring revenue equal app portfolio dot map. So the first step we're going to do is for each item in the array, we're going to multiply monthly price times dollar sign zero dot users. Now we have a little uh, issue here because if you look, monthly price is a double, users is an int. So we're going to have to cast our int to a double so we can multiply that. Once we've mapped each of our apps uh, recurring revenue, again, monthly price times users, then we're gonna tack on a reduce at the end of that to total up that array to get our total monthly recurring revenue for our whole portfolio. That's the process that we're gonna do here. So what it's saying here is I need to make this a double so we can cast the dollar sign users to a double. So now if I print, just to show you these steps here, if I print recurring revenue, let's comment out total users. So if I print recurring revenue, what you're gonna see is an array of the recurring revenue for each app. So this is Creator View's recurring revenue, Fit Hero zero, you know, buckets was 30,000. Now, by tacking on a reduce, I can sum up this total to get the overall portfolio recurring revenue. Again, you can just chain them. So the map, like I said, spits out its result into a variable. Well, that variable can be held like temporarily in memory if you tack on another reduce here. And then we wanna start with zero, and then this is just a simple version, right? We just add the plus. We wanna sum that up. So what happens is we, map out and get each app's recurring revenue, and then we tack on a reduce at the end, and then the result of that will, will get spit into recurring revenue, and then we're gonna print out recurring revenue. So if I run this, this should spit out one number for my overall app's recurring revenue, so 150,000 for my app portfolio. And if you wanted to know what it's gonna be after Apple's cut, you can you know, multiply each one by 0.7, because that's all you're gonna get, or if you wanted to account for taxes, all that stuff. So now we're taking each app's recurring revenue, multiplying it by 70% because that's you know the developer cut. Then we're reducing that, run it again. Now our 150 grand a month turned into 105,000 a month.
So like I said, you can combine maps, filters, reduces, but as you can also see, this code gets to be uh, quite unreadable, especially to newer developers. So like I said, be careful with this power, but just so you know, they can be combined. And for certain situations, it makes for a super clean one-liner, but it can get out of hand. Now let's talk about compact map and flat map. These are relatively new additions to, to Swift. I shouldn't say I'm getting old. It's like Swift 4 point something, <laughs> but they weren't around from the beginning. So to put these really simple, what compact map does is it removes nils from an array. Let me show you an example. We'll say let nil numbers, which is an array of int, but they're optional, right? Maybe, you know, in your array, you have one, nil, 17, nil, three, seven, nil, 99, right? For some reason, when you get an array, you can either have nil or a number, but when you want to use this array, you just want to get rid of all those nils and only deal with the numbers. So to do that, let non nil numbers equals nil numbers dot compact map. And then you just pass in the closure of dollar sign zero. And then now if I print non nil numbers, let me comment out recurring revenue, uh, run that, print the non nil numbers. You can see I get one seventeen three seven ninety nine. just got rid of the nils. So again, the simple way to remember compact map is it filters out the nils. Now for flat map, again, a simple way to remember this is that if you have an array of arrays, it flattens them into a single array. Let's take a look. Let array of arrays, and that is gonna be of type an array of int. So that's how you do an array of arrays equals, and I'll keep these short to keep the typing to a minimum. So you see, I have an array of arrays, right? Each array is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what flat map does is let's say, let single array equals array of arrays dot flat map. And again, dollar sign zero. So now if I print single array, let's run that. And you can see it took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and put it all into one array where it had an array of arrays. So you can imagine if maybe you have a bunch of different groups of numbers and you gather them all together into array and you're like, I don't care about each array. I just want to know the total. There you go. Flat map is there. And let's say before you flatten the array, you wanted to do something to the array. Well, you can do that in the closure here. So you can do a map and then pass in another closure. Again, we're getting to some complex examples. We'll say dollar sign zero times two. So I'm gonna tell you what this is. So within the flat map, I passed in a map to where each item in the subarrays, the one, two, three, the four, five, six, the seven, eight, nine, I wanna multiply those by two, right? I wanna double those. And then after I double them, flatten that into a single array. So now when I print single array, instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you're gonna get all those numbers in a single array, but doubled. So run that, should get two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. Yep, there you go. If you're preparing for an interview, here learning about these higher order functions, a great way to stand out is to have a developer portfolio or a developer website. And that brings me to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to help you get that iOS developer portfolio, blog, or personal website up and running very quickly. Now I know we're all developers with the skills and the desire to build the web page ourselves, but I would argue there's an opportunity cost to your time. If you're an iOS developer trying to build a great product, a great app, maybe spending a lot of time learning the ins and outs of web development, responsive design, isn't the best way to spend your time. That's why I recommend Squarespace to build that personal website, the blog, your portfolio, or maybe a landing page for your app. They have all kinds of beautiful themes and templates to get you started. They handle all the analytics and the SEO for you. Again, it just saves you so much time so you can get back to doing what you wanna do, and that is building iOS apps. So when you're ready to get started, go to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.